Okay, hello internet. This is Tommy Kikyota, and this video is going to be about stemming out things in your tune and making reverse wet versions of them, particularly reverb, uh, reverse FX, but to sort of expand and embellish on that because reverb can be a little bit boring to throw a little serum FX and just sort of talk about the basic principles behind the whole concept in the first place. Uh, it's nothing quite unheard of, but I definitely think that it is an underrated technique that uh, I don't hear too many people do very often, although yes, uh, You'll definitely hear it in uh, like Cone Sound and Culprit, and I'm sure many, many other artists uh, do this, but um, I don't really hear many of my peers talk about this particular thing, so I'm just gonna jump right into it because I do think it's a cool little trick. So basically the concept is to stem out uh, like your bass group. Uh, in this case, I've separated it by uh, call and response bass. So actually, let's just peep what we got first. I'm going to mute the wet group that I have and we can just hear it um, as it is real quick. All right, let's see. the wet on it sounds like this so basically the idea here is you can stem out all of your bass together as one thing. So basically just doing file, export audio, uh, render track, uh, my bass group here. And then <clears throat> ideally, if there's any sidechain or any other effects on that group, I would turn it off um, before you do something like that. So then you can like actually have the stems. Um, or what I did for this in particular is just so I have a little bit more control is I did it for each of these individual uh, bass tracks, which I only have two. One is the call bass, which the call and response thing really just is like a musical idea that refers to uh, when uh, rhythmic and melodic elements seem to sort of like play off of one another and like almost like as if they're talking to each other. So the call bass here sounds like this. <laughs> And the response bass sounds like this. So basically what I've ended up doing is I have this frozen wet group here um, from when I uh, implemented these effects where um, I leave it frozen and muted. Well, one for the demonstration, but two, I would normally do this until I know that I like it. Uh, and then I'll usually save a new project file, like a new version of it. And then I'll get rid of this just so my uh, project isn't as cluttered. So I'll unfreeze this, I'll turn off the effects. And then basically right off the bat, what you can see um, is that this is just the original bass stem of the call bass. And then I reverse that. And then I put effects on it. So I'll turn off the reverb and the compressor for now so you can just get an idea. And I'm using Serum FX here. I've got a delay, a phaser, a chorus, and a hyper dimension thing. And basically I've automated the chorus depth, the chorus feedback, the delay time, the delay feedback, the phaser frequency, and the phaser depth. And this is basically what it sounds like. And then of course, when you, oh, let me turn on this reverb. I put turn on the reverb thing here because uh, serums like delay and sometimes even with the chorus too, if you don't have it low pass, like I don't in this case, sounds like very clicky in a way that I don't really like. So I just put on the reverb to soften it up a little bit. And then I just did the compressor to just sort of get rid of the dynamics and level out the sound a little bit because we're gonna be side chaining this later anyway uh, to its uh, original like dry call bass. So I'll freeze that like I had it. 
And I did the same thing for the response base too. It's the same idea. I just sort of have like a lot of like variety with automating all these different little parameters here. And then I have another version of each one that's just reverb with no serum FX. Um, and I did a little bit of a longer decay time. If you can see that it's like 676 milliseconds, whereas here I just have it at like 223, which is almost the minimum that you can have. Um, so I did that for both of those. I have the frozen groups in case I want to go back and change anything, but for the most part, I'm not using this. Maybe I'll make it red so I just know that I don't want to touch that, and I'll just mute it too, so I am further reminded. So now I have the wet call base versions, the reverb one and the serum FX one in its own group called wet call, and then I have wet response uh, for the same reasons for the response base. And basically what I've done is uh, once you, like this is um, how it was before. Oh, let me turn off this side chaining I have and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, you reverse it before you put on the effects because then once the effects are applied and you freeze it and you flatten it and you reverse it again and what happens is like the effects that you put on or reverb in this particular example come before the sample actually happens. So you definitely get like a pretty cool sound from that. I mean, you'll definitely uh, like you'll see this in like movies and stuff. If like it like a spirit is talking or whatever, it'll be like spooky and like you know it's just got reverse reverb on him and it sounds really cool. Um, it's, it's you know it's a really cool trick. Um, and then what I've done basically, this is like uh, the main reason that I have them stemmed out as separately, both like uh, the wet call and the wet response instead of just having. Uh, a wet version of my entire bass stems as a whole is because now I can side chain uh, the wet call to its corresponding dry call bass. And uh, so you're basically not having to have it like really fight for much headroom or but also just like perceivable like uh, space that's available in in uh, you know the in the song. So um, when the bass plays, it's probably right here. Um, it's going to duck out for the most part. I don't have the threshold down all the way or the ratio up, uh, you know, all the way, although that is pretty high. Um, but um, yeah, for the most part, it ducks out. But really what you end up hearing is this tail that happens right before. And then what's cool about that too, though, the re like another reason why I don't have it just stemmed out as all one bass thing uh, with a uh, side chain from just the bass group in general um, is because if I did that, then it would almost always be being side chained out. So now what this allows us to do is like the response base is being side chained. There's the wet response base is being side chained by the dry response, just like the wet call is being side chained by the dry call. And um, you you basically uh, you, you have it so that this. Um, there's going to be moments where it's not going to be side chained just by the all, everything that's happening. So like uh, if it were being side chained just by the bass group in general, then like you wouldn't hear this little tail here. Um, but because this isn't being side chained by the call bass, um, then you're allowed a little bit more uh, room to breathe. And, you know, you basically just get to show off that you even have this sort of thing in the track. <laughs> I also did it with the vocals too. Uh, same idea. I have the frozen one here um, in case I wanted to change it. And then I have the uh, bounced and uh, reversed uh, wet version of that here. And I've side chained that to the vocals too. I'll turn that off. And then what's cool about this too, I love doing this uh, where basically um, now on the bass group, like I basically just copy and pasted this whole first section here um, and put it over here. Um, and then I low passed this section a little bit. So this is what it would sound like without all of the wet stuff going on. Uh, da, 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 wet bass things, I'll mute that. Let's see. I keep it real with it. I mean, you know, it's pretty, pretty boring, pretty like flat sounding. Um, but if I turn on this group here, it sounds pretty neat and pretty spacey. I keep it real with it.
And that's basically the whole concept in a nutshell. Uh, what is it? Link to my group. Okay. <clears throat> that's basically the whole concept in a nutshell. Um, like I have done for my other tutorials, I'll definitely include the link to this project file. It'll link to my gum road. It'll be $2, but it's free if you join my Facebook group, which is facebook.com backslash groups backslash Kyoto's Kitchen. And uh, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll be doing tutorials here and there and stuff. I got a lot of stuff going on, moving to Denver, yada, yada, yada. And I just wanted to share this little neat trick with the world. So I hope you have enjoyed. Peace out.